Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today it's a crappy day. It's only 28 degrees and it's like freezing rain out. The snow is like sand. So what a better day to head out the garage and start on a lowering kit. So stay tuned. So if you've been following along till this point, you know that we've got the rocker panels and cab corners done. If you're new to the channel, well, we did rockers and cab corners on this truck and I taught myself how to weld. Let's take a quick peek and see where we are up until this point. So right here on the pasture side, we got a new cab corner and a new rocker panel, inner and outer. We did put a patch panel in the bottom part of this fender and then we primed and painted everything. Yesterday, we came out and did the driver's side, so it's done too. Patch panel here, rocker panel and cab corner. And what we're going to be doing and concentrating on today is getting the axle removed from the vehicle, lowered down to the point where we can do the flip kit and get the axle sitting on top of the springs. And if you want to know what kind of a flip kit we're putting in this thing, I'm going to put a link right up here so you guys can go watch the unboxing of the full lowering kit front and rear. Like I said today we're going to concentrate on the rear and one of the things that we are going to have to do is once we get this spring pack out of the way we're going to put in some new bushings on both ends. Which means we're likely going to have to go out into this terrible weather out to the shop and use the press to press them in and out. I know there's hack ways of doing that but nevertheless uh, we'll try it here first and if we do end up having to go out well, we'll have to go out. So, let's get ready, start tearing this thing apart. All right, so as of right now, the truck is up on jack stands on the axle only. So what we need to do is we need to get the truck sitting on some jack stands from the frame. And the reason why is because we're gonna be lowering down that axle which is attached to the springs. So when we loosen up the springs, we don't want the truck falling down with it. So let's get some jack stands under there. And then we're gonna start by taking off the uh, the springs at the shackles first and then we'll tackle the u-bolts so let's get the truck stabilized and here's a close-up look at everything that we're going to need for our drop kit in the rear now this is a six inch drop kit so we've got our drop shocks u-bolts and brackets we've got our notch kit we've got our axle locator thingies bag of hardware instructions and a template so we know where to cut the holes for our notch kit all right so let's get these shocks off which I don't have. Work smarter, not harder. Four. So they don't call it the death wheel for nothing. I was over here cutting this U-bolt and I accidentally nicked the brake line. And as you can see, she's creating a little puddle on the floor there. So what I'm gonna have to do is uh, fix that up now at some point. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna wrap something around it, keep it from making a mess. So now we've got to get the bolts out of the spring shackles and have those springs basically laying in our hand, so to speak. Um, then we can jack up the axle, put everything, put the springs underneath and start putting everything back together. But because we're doing this C-notch, the C-notch really is the next trick uh, to get looked after. 
Now one of the neat things about this kit is that it does come with a template. And the template says right on it to align hole A with the hole in the chassis on the frame rail. The hole is used for the brake line bracket. This is the brake line bracket hole. So we're going to take hole A right there where my thumb is put it over that and then that way we can secure the paper to the frame and then start drilling out the holes that's required which is down here and over here so we can start with cutting. Now the reason why they say to drill holes in the corners uh, is for structural rigidity so uh, we're gonna go and drill those holes and then we can start with our template and then we'll be able to start taking the death wheel once again and cutting into the frame. Some people have a hard time with that and with this frame is in as good a shape as it's in, I kind of do too, but the fact that these supports, the fact that these brackets are as rigid as they are, makes me feel a heck of a lot better knowing that if I am cutting my frame, I'm not doing it a disservice by putting these brackets back on. They're held in there with one, two, six, seven, eight bolts all together. You could weld it if you wanted to, I don't think my welder is capable of handling that much and I don't trust my own welding to do anything like that. Anyway, the other thing you got to be concerned about with putting this bracket in here and cutting the frame out is your brake line which runs right here. Obviously that bracket holds a brake line and up here is your vent tube for your differential. So you're going to want to remove that. You're going to want to remove that bolt as well and see if you can pry that brake line away from the frame while you're cutting. That way you're not replacing any more brake lines than you have to. So I'm going to get those brake lines out of the way. We'll get the template cut and get it put into place and get our pilot holes drilled. So before we go too much further, uh, I've got the template all cut out. It's ready to go up there, but I refer back to the instructions once again, just because I am reading them. Uh, step 10 does state that it's time to cut out the bump stop. So the bump stop has a, a rubber piece right here, but because it's factory, it's riveted in. So what we've got to do is cut those rivets out and beat them out of the way because that bracket is going to be in the way of putting in our new brackets. So we've got to go and get those rivets out somehow and uh, I'm sure I'm probably going to have to use the air chisel. If not, I'll just use a death wheel, cut an X in it and kind of pound them through or whatever we got to do. So I'm going to get the rivets out because that's fun. Okay, so we've got the bump stop off on the pasture side here and we got the, rivet, the rivets pounded up through. These back ones, it's not really gonna matter, simply because those are gonna get cut out with the C-notch anyway. So let's get the template up there and get it taped off so we know where we're gonna cut. So there's our marks. We're gonna drill our holes here in the corner. We'll start cutting. Okay, so now that we've got our two half inch holes drilled out, we can now cut our lines right down the center. Now the way the instructions say, is that your lines should intersect in the center of the hole. And the reason again for that is to prevent stress cracks uh, from just two sharp edges meeting. So this is rounded, it'll help eliminate that. So now we're gonna go take the uh, die grinder or the grinder with a cutoff wheel and we're gonna zip our lines across here. Wish me luck, I need to go get another battery for the GoPro. Well, that's one cut frame for sure. So we've got our C-notch in place. We've got to clamp down with some vice grips. It ain't going anywhere. We've got all of our quarter inch pilot holes drilled. Now we're gonna go back with the half inch. That way we can get some hardware into it. And then this, uh, this side of the C-notch will be done. So let's get the drilling. Well, the old Hitachi getting pretty warm there, drilling through those. So uh, now that we've got these holes drilled, we've got some uh, three eighths, two three eighths to go up through the bottom. We'll get those done, and then we can take this off and clean all the burrs up where we've cut. We'll hit, we'll hit it with a uh, shot of black to uh, rust proof any of the holes and bare metal, and then this is done. We'll have to go over to the other side and do the cuts and the holes over there as well. And then 
we can start reversing the order in which we took everything apart and putting everything back together. Now, at some point we will come back and we'll probably end up doing the whole frame, but right now we're just gonna get this area that we're working on. Now we can put it back together, tighten up all those bolts that came with the kit and call this side, as far as the C-notch, done. Okay, so it's after supper on the same day. We've got the passenger side absolutely 100% complete as far as the C-notch. Now we're gonna concentrate on getting the C-notch done on the driver's side. Once we get that done, that's gonna finish up this video and we can do all the reassembly in the next video. So uh, I just think we're gonna have way too much content to, uh, to make this one happen. But we'll see how it goes. Maybe we will get it done. Anyways, we're gonna start removing the uh, bump stop, which is the biggest hurdle, uh, even over cutting, believe it or not. And uh, we'll get that taken out and uh, start marking our template, drilling our holes, blah, blah, blah. Away we go. So now what we've got to do is basically start the reassembly of the rear axle and leaf springs again. But I can't finish that up tonight because I've got to get these old bushings out front and rear on both sets of leaf springs. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them to the shop tomorrow. I'll get them pressed out and pressed back in. Then we can come back here and reinstall them tomorrow night. But I think I'll save that for another episode. So for now, let's close out this video. So I guess one thing I can say about the Belltech drop kit for the rear here is that the instructions, for the most part, are super easy to follow. And I kind of had an idea what I was doing anyways because I follow so many channels that have done this exact drop. So I, I was kind of able to follow along in my head with the videos that I have watched in the past. Nonetheless, we followed the instructions, we got everything in place. I'm really happy with the uh, construction of this kit. All we got to do now is get those bushings and the leaf springs and we can start putting those back together. Now the other thing that I'm thinking about doing is taking a few leafs out of that leaf pack because this truck normally was a heavy half from the factory and I think it's just got way too many leaf springs in it. Having said all of that, on the next episode we'll be doing the leaf springs, putting them back in the truck and then we can put the tires on, get it back on the floor. Then we should notice a huge difference. Once we get that done, we'll be able to head up front and start tackling the control arms, the spindles, all the front end components up there and get this thing sitting back down on the ground without the jack stands. Guys, I appreciate you sticking around with me during this whole build. Uh, same as you know, doing the rocker panels and cab corners, it seems to be a little bit of a series. So this, I guess we're gonna call part one of the lowering kit. And we'll continue with part two and part three likely uh, up front, depending on how long that takes. So our special guest on the Car Guy and Six Fan Show this Thursday night on my channel is going to be Robbie from United By Trucks. We've been teasing all week about who it's going to be and that this person knew a lot about square body trucks and C10 trucks. So Robbie's going to be a part of our show and we're going to get some questions answered from him as well as he's going to join in and help answer some questions from you. That show starts at 7 o'clock Central and 8 Eastern on my channel this week and next week we'll be back over on Grant Tommy who is straight six fan and uh, I encourage you to go over there and check out his page he's got lots to offer over there as well and subscribe to him because if you don't you won't know when the car guy six fan show is coming out you'll get notifications if you do stay focused on the windshield not the rearview mirror I love you guys God bless we'll see you in the next video